In this video, I'm gonna show you the biggest mistakes Canadians make when using the TFSA. The tax-free savings account, also known as a TFSA, is my favorite investment account to use in Canada. It's also Canadians' most popular account with over 57% owning one. Every year, I make sure to max out my account. But while working as a financial advisor, I've seen some major mistakes that people make with their TFSA. Let's go over those and make sure you know all the TFSA rules and pitfalls. Mistake number one, using your TFSA only as a savings account. The TFSA was created by this gentleman here named Kevin McCarthy, and he was a former chief of staff to the Canadian Minister of Finance. Well, first of all, Mr. McCarthy, I'd like to thank you for making such an amazing account such as the TFSA, but although the TFSA is great, I think he made one huge mistake when naming the TFSA. Instead of tax-free savings account, it should have been named the tax-free investment account, or maybe the tax-free investment and savings account. But by just naming it savings, I believe it's giving Canadians a belief that you can only use it for savings. And that's reflected in the data. A 2019 survey showed that 42% of holdings inside all of TFSAs across Canada are in cash only and 15% are in GICs or term deposits, which means that 57% is in cash or cash equivalents. So that's a huge amount that's in just cash or cash equivalents. The TFSA's worst enemy is inflation. Now, I'll explain why investing in just cash is a bad thing and why you should aim to invest instead. And it's one word, which is inflation. If inflation is higher than the rate of return on your investment, then your money is actually losing value over time. This is especially the case if you're depositing your money into a TFSA savings account at one of the big banks, which have shockingly low rates, oftentimes less than 0.1% per year. So if we assume around a 2% inflation rate per year, this means your money is actually losing almost 2% of its value every single year. This is why investing is a smarter choice. With a balanced or growth portfolio of equity and fixed income, you should be able to achieve around a three to 5% per year return, or an even higher return if you're willing to hold more equity over the long term. Of course, these aren't guaranteed returns and it is riskier, but it's kind of a ballpark of what you could earn. I'll share my TFSA strategy. So I invest my entire TFSA in stocks and ETFs, and I use an online bank called EQ Bank for an account separate from my TFSA for short-term purchases and my emergency fund. Currently, it's at a 1.5% rate, which almost keeps pace with inflation but it's way better than anything that a big five bank can provide. I've added a link in the description in case you want to open an account there. Mistake number two, investing in your TFSA if you have credit card debt. So when I was working as a financial advisor, I noticed something weird that many clients would do. Some clients would have large credit card debts, say maybe 10,000 or more, but they would have $10,000 invested in their TFSA in something like a balanced mutual fund or a growth fund. This is a huge mistake. Because of the super high interest rates that credit cards charge, if you're paying something like 20% or more in interest rates for your credit card, but you're only earning three to 7% from a mutual fund, that means you're basically guaranteeing yourself a loss of close to 15 to 17% every single year. It's better off for you to just pay off the high interest credit card debt first and then start building your investments after it's all paid off. Mistake number three, over contributing to your TFSA. One of my favorite features about the TFSA is that the limits are the same for every Canadian. Every year, we all get the same amount. So your income level does not matter, unlike the RSP. This is great because it provides every Canadian with ample room to start saving. You carry forward the unused TFSA room that you haven't used in the previous years. So if you miss a year, don't worry, it'll still be available for you in the next year. The caveat to that is if you go over the limit, you will incur a penalty of 1% of the value every single month, which is a large penalty. So make sure you don't over contribute and always check your TFSA contribution limit if you're not sure. There are a few ways you can check and I'll quickly go over them here. What I do to check my TFSA limit and I think is the best way is if you have an account, log into your CRA's My Account. 
If you don't have one, I would highly recommend you open one as it makes things like filing your taxes way easier and checking your TFSA. After you get into your account, navigate to the TFSA section and find where it says the contribution room. Keep in mind though that this number does not contain your contributions or withdrawals from the current year. So be careful, make sure that you factor that in. The second way to check your limit is the old fashioned way and that's by calling the CRA tax information phone service or tips and you call them at this number here. The third way is to calculate it yourself or the do it yourself way. You could check out this table here. Your max limit is $69,500 if you were born before 1991 as of 2020. If you were born after 1991, the calculation gets a little trickier and I would recommend you using methods one or two in that case. Keep in mind these are 2020 numbers and 2021 you'll be able to contribute more depending on what the limit is. It's not been announced at this point, so make sure you keep an eye out. Mistake number four, withdrawing from your TFSA and then contributing in the same year. So I must admit, I've made this mistake myself before. It's a really tricky one to think about because it's not really that intuitive. Logically, you would think that if you withdraw from your TFSA, that means you should be able to invest that same amount back right away without any penalty, right? Well, no, that's not always the case and it can lead to over contribution if you're at your TFSA investment limit. Here's an example that shows you how easy it is to make this mistake. Say you've invested and you're at the maximum limit of your TFSA this year, but if you want to withdraw to make a purchase and say you withdraw $5,000 and then you deposit $5,000 later that same year. Well, now you're over your TFSA limit and you're subject to a 1% penalty every single month. So it's $50 every month you're gonna have to pay for as long as you're over. It's a really easy mistake to make and one that many Canadians fall victim to every single year. So be really careful about that one. Mistake number five, over trading in your TFSA. So do you wanna become a day trader to make some huge tax-free returns inside your TFSA? Well, you should really think again. If you run your TFSA like a business, the CRA will tax it like one. If you're trading up a storm in your TFSA, you run the risk of the CRA slapping you with heavy penalties on not only the taxes owed, but potentially more. The CRA audited TFSAs between 2009 and 2017 and found that $114 million in taxes were owed to the government. And a lot of that were related to TFSAs being found as generating business income instead of normal investment income. So the legislation and rules are a bit vague when it comes to this, but the CRA has mentioned that it looks at things like frequency of trading, specialized knowledge of investment markets, and how much time the TFSA account holder spends researching trades. There are no set guidelines though, so if you're not sure, it's better to err on the side of caution. But the CRA has been clear about this point and it's that the TFSA was meant for a savings and investment vehicle for Canadians, not for day traders to turn a profit. The TFSA is probably the best investment account available to Canadians, but it's not without its fair share of pitfalls and mistakes. I hope this video has opened your eyes to some of them. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out content every single week. If you wanted to learn more about the TFSA and not just the mistakes that you can make, I have written a TFSA ultimate guide on the wealthawesome.com blog, which is one of Canada's fastest growing personal finance blogs. So make sure you check it out if you're interested. And as always, thanks for listening.